lot of times when we look at unworthiness and when we assess it and we see somebody coming in as an adult with this sense of shame, we really look at we tend to look at attachment and how they were raised and how did this feeling of unworthiness develop in them. And I think it's really important to, to recognize that there are anxious people. There are people who are perfectionistic. There are people that have this unbelievably high standard for themselves that nothing they do is good enough that come from very connected, attached families. And I think that that's an important thing to pay attention to. The way that this thing rears its head or the way that this thing gets passed down or modeled is not based on a lack of a, an insecure attachment. It's not based on neglect. It's not based on being unloved, but it is often based on how the parents themselves model their own high self-standards, their own self-criticism, and their own perfectionism. So in this particular family, it is an incredibly loving, connected family. I've known them for a while. There are several siblings. These parents would do anything for their kids, but they themselves are very critical of themselves. So what are the first things I'm going to do when I see this dynamic in a family where this, this unworthiness is something that's being modeled, where I am looking at the parent and seeing their own perfectionism and their own self-criticism? What's the first thing that I want to do? The first thing I want to do is just some straight up psychoeducation of how things get modeled. And sometimes just bringing it to the parents' awareness and to talk about it as a family pattern, I find it to be enormously helpful to talk to parents about what they learned from their parents. What is the generational transmission of this? The reason that it's so helpful to do that right from the beginning is because it takes away the blame that they might feel it takes it helps with their own shame if these are parents who are really self-critical and as soon as you come at it and say look your kid is struggling of course they're going to put it on themselves but we really want to look at this as a generational pattern and then i want to have family sessions to talk about how this thing shows up and what's the language that they use so we really want to talk to families about how do we look at this you know, it, it, from a perspective of how do these norms, how do these ideas, how do these strong feelings and social requirements get passed down to families? What is the culture of the family? You're not doing it on purpose, but what's the culture of a family that really sort of sets the stage for this? One of the examples from a family I can remember is that the mom, the, the daughter was really struggling with body image, felt incredibly insecure about her body, was struggling with that. And the mom came in and truly the mom said, I make sure that she feels good about her body. I give her the message all the time that she has a lovely body, that this is the body that she's in. And then the mom said in front of the daughter, the reason I want to make sure that I do that is because I struggle so with my body issues, right? And I thought, oh, okay. And then in talking to the mom, the mom is horribly critical about her own body. The mom was always beating herself up, looking in the mirror, going on diets, so I want to talk to the parents and say, it, this is about what you model. You are not saying to your daughter directly, you need to lose weight, but you are saying to yourself all the time, I'm not good enough. And that's what your daughter is seeing. And so when we, when we put it in that context and we begin to look at it as patterns and we bring it up to awareness, then we can, we can, make, some, we can make some progress.